At the Shanghai Cooperation Organization meeting in Samarkand, Chinese President Xi Jinping stressed the need for concerted action on terrorism. However, does President Xi really mean to take action on terrorism? Can the world really expect China and its close ally Pakistan to cooperate in the ongoing global war on terror? Let's focus our attention on the China-Pakistan nexus, which directly and indirectly supports global terrorism. China blocked a motion in the UN to designate Lashkari Taiba terrorist Abdul Rahman Maki as a global terrorist. Jaishi Mohammed terrorist Abdul Rauf Azar was saved from sanctions in August. And now, 2611 mastermind Sajid Mir has also found assistance from the Chinese. China has blocked a joint India United States attempt to blacklist Pakistan based terrorist Sajid Mir under the 1267 Al Qaeda Sanctions Committee of the UN Security Council as a global terrorist. China defends its actions as so-called technical objections based on procedural loopholes. However, it is an open secret that they have a clear pattern of protecting Pakistan internationally. Beijing's actions expose its hypocrisy and double standards when it comes to the international community's shared battle against terrorism. Political considerations, unfortunately, prevent the sanctions committee from achieving their intended aims, thus derailing the efforts to fight terrorism. At the UN Security Council briefing on Ukraine's fight against impunity, India, while taking aim at China, strongly cautioned against the politics of protecting terrorists. Politics should never, ever provide cover to evade accountability, nor indeed to facilitate impunity. Regrettably, we have seen this of late in this very chamber when it comes to sanctioning of some of the world's most dreaded terrorists. Diplomatically, China has provided almost unwavering support for Pakistan at the United Nations. Meanwhile, Pakistan assumes that their friendship is as sweet as honey and as deep as the sea. And to prove its loyalty to Beijing, Pakistan has forfeited territory and sovereignty. Pakistan, facing economic and political uncertainty, has relied upon Chinese loans. China is enjoying many benefits under its Belt and Road Initiative in Pakistan. However, it seems that the real impetus behind Pakistan and China's relationship is in attempting to keep their common rival, India, off balance. While Beijing attempts to counter India by keeping tensions on the boil in its neighborhood, Pakistan and their nefarious intelligence wing, the ISI, spread misinformation against New Delhi. Islamabad attempts to mislead the global community with baseless and malicious propaganda against India. All successive governments in the Islamic Republic have used Kashmir as a scapegoat in its shameful diplomatic approach against India. Pakistan continues to parrot its own flawed narrative on Kashmir globally as an attempt to divert attention from the state of affairs in their country and from their own actions. Pakistan's economy is on the verge of crisis and the recent floods have displaced and killed many. And still, Kashmir seems to be the topic of choice for Pakistan's leaders. A typical Pakistani case of mistaken priorities. A polity that claims it seeks peace with its neighbors would never sponsor cross-border terrorism. Nor would it shelter planners of the horrific Mumbai terrorist attack, disclosing their existence only under pressure from the international community. Blinded by Chinese promises of economic prosperity and friendship, the current government in Pakistan is destroying its chances of ever being viewed as legitimate in the global community. Pakistan can continue to ignore the needs of its people and tout its unfounded narrative against India. India will continue to prosper and will continue to hold Pakistan and China accountable globally. Pakistan is on the verge of collapse, not just economically, but socially as well, and the voices of dissent are growing strong. Some of the worst human rights crimes are committed in a nation where the military and Islamic fundamentalists rule the roost. Three of Pakistan's provinces, Sindh, Balochistan, and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, still remain underdeveloped, where poverty and malnutrition are rampant. 
The government does not appear to make any effort to upgrade the educational or medical infrastructure. Those brave individuals who demand their fundamental rights are facing persecution at the hands of security agencies and Islamic fundamentalists. The activists further accuse the authorities of discrimination and carelessness in carrying out rescue operations, even though the country is experiencing catastrophic flooding. In locations where there has been significant damage caused by the floods, activists are calling for international help to save Pakistan's forgotten residents. It is the Pakistani uh, military establishment uh, that has unleashed uh, uh, human rights uh, atrocities on the Sindhi people that are going unnoticed by the international community. And these human rights uh, violations uh, range from physical elimination of the Sindhi people uh, in shape of extrajudicial killings and enforced disappearances uh, to their cultural uh, economic exploitation. During the 51st session of the UN Human Rights Council, the Sindhis, Baloch, Pashtuns, and activists from Pakistan-occupied Kashmir raised their voices for justice. According to the Human Rights Watch Report 2021, the authorities in Pakistan expanded their use of draconian sedition and counter-terrorism laws to stifle dissent and strictly regulated civil society groups critical of government actions or policies. Women, religious minorities, and transgender people continue to face violence, discrimination, and persecution, with authorities failing to provide adequate protection or hold defenders accountable. The government has turned a blind eye to law enforcement agencies' brazen acts of torture and other serious abuses. The political activists from Pakistan-occupied Kashmir blame the army and other authorities for exploiting their natural resources. Meanwhile, the indigenous people continue to live in abject poverty. हमें किसी किसी की कोई आजादी नहीं है हमारे तमाम नेचुरल रिसोर्सेज पे आर्मी कब्जा किए हुए है और फिर सबसे बड़े जुल्म की बात यह है कि हमारी फॉरेस्ट लैंड जो है वो आर्मी ने अलर्ट करवा दी है डिफरेंट एरियाज के अंदर और जितने भी टूरिस्ट रिसोर्स थे उन पे कब्जा करके मकामी लोगों के लिए उन एरियाज को बैन कर दिया है इन अप्रैल ऑफ 2021 the European Parliament passed a resolution on the deplorable human rights violations in Pakistan and called for an immediate review of Pakistan's eligibility for GSP Plus status, which grants Pakistan trade benefits on condition of its compliance with human rights obligations. During a recent visit to Islamabad, MEPs from the European Parliament's Subcommittee on Human Rights discussed a wide range of human rights topics in their meetings with Pakistan's top political leaders. The MEP said it was important for Pakistan to undertake timely reforms and legislative changes on human rights issues and to translate them into concrete improvements. They called for determined and structured action, including the swift adoption of laws against torture and enforced disappearances, steps to substantially reduce the number of crimes carrying the death penalty, and to apply the new procedures for mercy petitions. Despite facing pressure from international organizations, the human rights situation in Pakistan remains grim and voices of dissent are on the rise.